here now is Bill McGurn of the Wall Street Journal columnist. He is a Fox News contributor yeah. as well. Um, you know, as we look at all of these stories and all this back and forth, all I can think about is the number of people that are still out of work and those numbers that we heard at the top that were really staggering. Um, the only way to get people back to work is to get businesses back up and running. And we've been doing some research. Um, if you look online, and, and the best we can do is kind of look on Yelp. There aren't a lot of official numbers on this, but it seems about half of the businesses that are still closed right now are going to end up being permanently closed. And we've clawed back almost half of the jobs that we lost. So if you do that math, we're going to end up with some people that are permanently unemployed. But the more businesses we can get open sooner, the, the, you know, the smaller that permanently unemployed number is going to be. How do we get there, Bill? Well, I think for one thing, we should start talking about it exactly the way you say. Uh, the biggest stimulus is getting the American economy working again, getting businesses open. Um, how can you expect the economy to fully recover when so many businesses are closed and so many people can't work? Again, I, I go through this. We're always told we're in it together and we're not in it together. Some of us are lucky. We can work from home. But I go down to my main street and I see all these people out of work and businesses really struggling. We should be emphasizing not even what Congress can do, but the need to open in smart and intelligent ways. We can do it. We can do that. There might have to be some restrictions, but we should be getting a lot more of this economy back at working. Yeah. I mean, you, I, we have a graphic that shows in each industry, whether it's restaurants or it's shopping or it's retail, it shows which percentage is still closed. And for most of the categories, it's about a third of the businesses that are still closed, which I thought was a sad but fascinating data point. Um, so just so that you know where we stand. The only one where the majority, more than 50 percent are still closed, is restaurants and retail. And you look at New York, right. where all this pressure recently has pushed the governor to say that they can open at 25 percent capacity at the end of the month. And now you hear that Mayor Bill de Blasio is pushing back on that and he wants even stricter, more restrictions. When our infection rate has been below one percent for more than 30 days, why is it that these local business leaders don't understand that when they keep all these businesses closed, they are hurting the poorest among us. They are hurting people who work for minimum wage, who are losing a job temporarily and probably permanently. Why don't they care about the working poor? Yeah, I don't know, because we don't see them as much. Again, a lot of the people writing stories and covering this are people that still have jobs and are still getting full paychecks. I agree with you on the 25 percent. I'm in New Jersey. We're limited to 25 percent indoor capacity. This is nuts. How is a business supposed to keep going on 25 percent? Uh, my town is very restaurant heavy, and I just think of the number of jobs and livelihoods each restaurant that's closed or limited represents. Uh, again, there's no substitute. There's no permanent relief until businesses are reopened and people can go back to work. Whatever the government does can be supplementary. Some of it can be helpful to uh, help people caught in a pinch that's not their own fault. But the emphasis has to be on how do we get our places back open in, in a way that uh, averts risk. Yeah. When, when you look at the leaders all around the country who, um, you know, have gone overboard and a lot of places in these decisions where it has hurt all of these working people and small business owners around the country, we try to show people on the show that every small business has a face. You know, there's a family, there's a person that has risked everything right. for the American dream to have a business, to try and make something bigger. Do these politicians, is it is it that they're they're power mad and they love, you know, sort of this control of keeping things closed? Do you think it's for political reasons, you know, that they're trying to hurt or do they do they really think they're doing the right thing for the community, even though the science doesn't back it up? Well, I think there's two things. Uh, I've always thought that American liberalism in its late stages today seems to be a lot about just bossing other people around, telling them what they can do and what they can't do. I think in this case, in a lot of Democratic enclaves, big cities and so forth, there's an incentive because they're afraid of Donald Trump getting credit if the economy starts to function again. And I think at least through November, a lot of these people are willing to sacrifice 
uh, people who are less well off to keep Donald Trump from getting uh, elected. And that's very sad.